I am strong. I am fearless. I am courageous. I am beautiful. I can do all things. I am created to be me. I am a woman. And I am the funky. I'm Sheila E and I wanna say that I'm a super high power cold crushing lady. And I'm here to talk about this thing called rap to all the party people at the party this pack. And you know I'm fresher, can never be lesser. Sheila E rocks the best under pressure. So all of you hip hop bebop fans, get out of your seat and just clap your hands. Get down, don't clown to the funky sound. Cause the beat is dropping all over the town. Curtis blow, whoo, you can never be weak. <laughs> get on the mic and let me hear you speak. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, 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 king yes, the king is, yes, yes, the best, y'all. yes, 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 Life is all about special moments, joy, uplifting our youth, keeping active, and having conversations with our friends, even lusting over our shoes, and dancing when no one is watching. It's the music that keeps us alive. And my next friend was the first of many accomplishments, the first rapper to sign to a major record label, perform on Soul Train, tour the world, and the first hip-hop rapper superstar. The legend himself, Mr. Curtis Blow. Curtis, how are you? I'm doing great. Yes, I'm mighty fine. Feeling <laughs> just blessed and highly favored. Amen. You, know? you Amen. look incredible. I've spoken to you a few times since you've been out and about. Uh-huh. So tell us how you're doing. How is everything? First and foremost, God is still in the miracle business. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I've been through uh, several ordeals, life-threatening situations where I, I went into cardiac arrest. Wow. I died for five minutes. I had like four heart operations. Oh, and wow. the last one was a real live heart transplant. Wow. But it was successful, and I have a brand new lease on life. We serve a God of second and third chances, and wow, it, it's just awesome that I could be here talking to to you right now with a 34-year-old heart. Praise God. My goodness, what we're so grateful that God is so good that you are here, you're healthy, you look incredible. Thank you, thank <laughs> oh you. And God. I want to thank everyone for praying for me. Because, you know, prayer really works. It and does. they say, you know, when two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, Amen. God is there answering, listening and answering those prayers. So it works. It definitely works. Well, you are a walking miracle, I should say, right now. And we are thanking you actually for just being here, just taking the time to just talk with us a little bit. And we've spoken, like I said, and we were trying to get this like Crush Groove reunion thing happening. And I want to talk about Crush Groove because, gosh, it's been 1985, I think, October that... I think it was 85 that 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 movie was released. That's when I first met you. (laughs) Yes, it was an incredible time. We shot the film in three weeks and we had a ball. It was fun. It was glorious and the best time of my life. I remember meeting everyone and I always talk about how gracious you were to me uh, and you're still the same like how gracious and warming and and welcoming to those who were coming in especially me not being in the hip-hop field and right. I remember you know talking to you and you were just so nice to me and and you stayed that way the entire time. Right. And uh, I remember, like, some of the other uh, rappers were very rude to me and mean and saying things. And I don't even know if you knew that. And there, it, there was some 
friction that was happening. And at one point, it got so bad that I quit. So I don't know if you know that I quit the film. Oh, for, wow. You did no. not know. Oh, my. No, I did not know. Oh, my gosh. Really? That was something. You Let me tell you, we loved you. You did, yes. Oh, my yes. God. <laughs> yes, I did. Listen. Yes. When I found out that you were going to be a part of this movie, I hit the ceiling. <laughs> and that was everything. And listen, every time you got on stage, I was oh. like so happy. Everything you did was a, a, a big part of being in a movie and being with a legitimate superstar. Oh. And that you were. Thank you My so God. much. My God. I never I never knew you had such a bad time of it. I, I would have definitely, you know, would have stepped it up and had a conversation <laughs> with a couple of those rappers. <laughs> yeah, Please it was, me. yeah, it was, <laughs> you know, it's just I wanted to be a part of the, the hip hop scene, which I loved so much. And right. I was a fan of yours and, and the Beastie Boys and the Fat Boys and then Run DMC, of course, you know. Right, and, right. And Rev, at Run DMC, all of them, they were so sweet to me. They're very, very kind. Very kind right, to me. Right, right. But I always... Talk about how you were like one of the first ones that I met and you were so sweet and kind and gracious. And and so I really appreciate that because um, that's what kept me going through the film, knowing that I felt that you cared, that I was there. And again, a lot of, a, a lot of people don't know what I went through and they ended up having to talk me into staying to, to finish the film. But you know what? You know what? It never came across on film. The audience and the people never knew what you were going through and because it never came across on film. You yeah. handled it like no. the true entertainer <laughs> that you are. Thank you so Amen. much. Well, I, I mm -hmm. want to tell people that, you know, in not knowing how to do a film and, and I didn't take any lessons, I didn't know what to do. I remember practicing in the mirror and I, I had a video camera and that's how I practiced what I was going to do for Love Bazaar. And then when we did Holly Rock, same thing. I practiced, I'm going to do a slide. I'm going to slide over uh, uh. and, you know, and do this whole thing and, you know, make sure that the band were all choreographed together. And we practiced a lot to make sure that, you know, before we did this, that it would look good, that if we just did one take, the one take would be good enough. Uh, well, you know, that slide was a keeper and they they used that so much in the promotion they of did. the film, you know? That's so that, right, that they was, did. That was a classic. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Can you imagine all of the uh, people that were in that movie and what they're doing now in their lives? Some of them weren't famous then and up and coming, you know? Um, uh -huh. Right. Like, right. for instance, like, LL Cool J. <laughs> right. LL, yeah, 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 right? What a superstar! A superstar he turned out to be, huh? <laughs> right. Wow, that was his first movie. The first time he was on camera, I remember it was this one scene. He was just like pu pushing a box across right. the stage, and he looked in the camera. It was like <laughs> incredible, incredible. But it, there was a lot of guys like uh, New Edition, mm -hmm. yeah, Fat Boys went on. The, have a great career. Uh, Rick Rubin. And I mean, Rick Rubin. Look my at God. Him. Yes. Him. Incredible. Yeah. But, you know, he came up with a, another sound that became predominant in hip hop, which was the 808 909 drum machine. You know, really? that big boom that you hear so much in hip hop. And he came up with that idea along with really? uh, Run DMC as well. I did yeah. not know that. Oh, he wow. was incredible. Yes, he was. Yes, wow. he was. Yeah, he's and an he incredible producer. He became Russell's first partner with um, Crush Records, but they turned it into Def Jam because I had a patent on the name Crush Group. Oh, I didn't know that either. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was like, yo, you're going to start a record label and I'm not going to be your partner? You're going to choose Rick Rubin over me? Well, I own the name. <laughs> I did uh, not know that. Make, you got to make it another. It can't be Crush Crew. Wow. And that's when they came up with Def Jam. 
Uh, see, I didn't know that because I was yeah. going to ask you, what are some of the things that came out of the movie that people don't know and that I did not know? Orange Crush was the name of my band. That was the, the my favorite soda, Orange Crush Orange soda, Crush. right? <laughs> but Crush was spelled with a K, K-R-U-S-H, which was Curtis and Russell. His management company was called Rush, right. Rush Productions. So the K in Rush makes Crush. And that's when we came up with the Crush Grooves from the Orange Crush Band. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, Wow. Yeah. Early, so, early, early Crush Groove stuff. <laughs> so who was whose idea was it to pull together the artists that were in the movie? Was it you and Russell and Michael or other people or George? The first idea was George Jackson. George, yeah. George Jackson was a member of the Wildcats, a famous football wow. player in Harlem, man. Everybody loved that guy. He used to run the ball, and he was incredible. So later on, he went out to California, and he got with Richard Pryor, and they got $40 million from Warner Brothers to make movies. Oh. So the first movie they wanted to make was, of course, Crush Brew. He came to the fever one night, and he said, Kurt, Kurt, my name is George Jackson, and we want to do a movie about you. I said, "You're wait, you're George Jackson? Did you used to play football for the Wildcats? And he said, yeah, that was me. Wow. I was a half. I said, I remember you. I remember you were a super duper star, right? Well, he said, well, we want to do a movie. I got this company with Richard Pryor. We want to do a film about you called The King of Rap. Right. And I said, wow, that's incredible. Oh, my God. And then I called Russell over and said, Russell, Russell, this is George Jackson. He went through a movie and hook up with him. And Russell was my manager during that time. So they exchanged numbers. And wow. then that's how the movie became Crush Group. I did not know this story. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was a blessing. I mean, it was so important to have that many artists and right at that time right. and and the collaborations and to be able I mean this movie goes down in history people talk about it to this day still talking about it to this day and right. how impactful it was uh, for the hip not only just the hip hop community but everybody and it expanded in a way that I don't think anyone really expected I mean in, in a lot of careers like you said a lot of careers were launched mm -hmm. from that movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of the entertainers and, you know, uh, uh, superstars became superstars after that film. Right, you know? right. And, and I remember, oh, my gosh, the opening night. Woo! It was and insane. It was amazing. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, it was I mean, insane. It was like the block was shut down. The, right. You can't even get that many people on that block. It, and that was the right. place to be, the place to go. And for right. us to be a part of that going, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you went to movie theaters across the country, they were sold out. Yeah. Everyone wanted to see that movie. They did. And it was incredible to see the reaction from the public. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. I remember uh, I went and I called uh, Oakland High School where I went to high school there. And I, I talked to the dean there and I said, look, I'd like to invite as many of the students from Oakland High School to come and see this screening of Crush Groove. And then I had family and friends. It was just open, you know, to whomever right. wanted to come. And we had it at the Grand Lake Theater in Oakland, which is our, you know, main uh, theater there in the Bay Area in Oakland, right. California, right at Lake Merritt. And to be able to have family, friends, and the Bay Area and the support and see this film, it was just, it was incredible. It was, it was a moment I'll never forget. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know you were feeling really good. I was. Night. I was. <laughs> I was. Yeah, it was incredible. Well, you were always so supportive uh, to everyone. You know, it's like you were the 
the brother or the uncle, you know, to some of the young people that were up and coming. And, you know, I know they all appreciate it. You're just, you're, you're yeah, one of our, I loved our them, fathers. Guys. Yeah. I loved them, all of them, man. You know, it was, it was like we were a family. I just want to thank you so much for just being here and talking and uh, just being able to see your face um, and just so thankful and uh, honored thank you. to call you friend and know you so long and you've never changed. You're always just as gracious as ever. And we so appreciate you. You are the Godfather, the King, the King. Oh, thank you, you are the King thank and we you, appreciate thank you. you. Thank you so much, Sheila. And you know, to God be, be the, glory. the glory. Amen. Amen. All the time. <laughs> All the time, yes. I'm giving you big yes. old hugs. I love you. And it's so great to see you. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank you for having me. We'll God see bless. you soon. All right. God bless, okay. man. Bye. All right. Peace. Peace. Hi, everybody. Today on Sheila ETV Wardrobe, check this out. Ooh, the original from Crush Groove and many other shows, but we had a lot of these made. This is the Prince look. This is from Prince's wardrobe. The wardrobe team made these outfits and this is the original one. Actually, it has Prince's name on the back of it. So I kept a lot of these because we wore each other's clothes. That's how it was um, back then. <laughs> this right here, again, made by Prince's wardrobe team, this jacket was worn during uh, Love Bazaar. That's what we are. We all want a love bazaar. Oh, yes. Then the microphone, you know. Yeah, I can't go down right there. Um, his pants are a little too tight. However, I think that this is really cool. Dun, 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 dun. This was the vest that I wore in the apartment scene when Run says, I can't rap, I need you to rap. And I do the whole rap thing that happens. I get on the floor, do a little break dancing. Yeah, these pants are a little tight. I'm not gonna get down on the floor today, but maybe on another day I can. All right. <laughs> anyway, I wore this during that apartment scene in Crush Groove. And this, this is what I wore at the end of Crush Groove and the Crush Groove All-Star song, Crush Grooving, body moving, body moving. Yes, look at this. Again, Prince's wardrobe team. And somewhere in New York on the streets, we found this as well. So here you go, crush grooving, body moving. Yes, yes, it is. Here you go. I'm sure that this fits. Well, kind of. Look at this. Crush grooving, body moving. I don't know. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> Enjoy. I'd like to thank my incredible guest, Mr. Curtis Blow, for being a part of this episode and telling us stories we didn't even know. I didn't know. Anyway, thank you so much, my brother. We are praying for you. You are a walking miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. We will see you next week on Sheila ETV because we are crush grooving, body moving. Woo! What was that dance? Body move. Oh, the up rock. <laughs> what? Anyway, one of those. I, I, I'll do it next time when I'm not in these heels and, and my pants are a little too tight. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Sheila ETV. Bye. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs>